Hi, I'm Donna Drake, and this week on Live It Up, it's a behind the scenes look at Cardinals Bush Stadium. Love the Cardinals, so stay tuned. Dan, welcome to Live It Up. Thank you. Thank and uh, you. you brought us down here on the field, and it doesn't feel like winter today, does it? No, we're very lucky to be here in the off season and have a day that uh, we'd be happy to have opening day with these conditions right now. And the grass is really like beautiful and green. I actually felt it. It's it's real grass. Oh sure. Okay, so so when you built the new stadium, I guess that was one of the uh, things that you put in place. Yeah, we actually had gone to new. Uh, live grass in the old stadium the last couple of years and I think all ballparks now it's just very very important for the healthier ball players if you can do it you want to have natural grass because it also helps their knees I guess they could maybe play a few more years longer then right knees and uh, uh, the elbows. burns the elbows <laughs> and uh, and and the other thing the the way the parks are built now even if it rains the grass they they have it such that the water flows right through and as soon as it stops raining, the, the field's play. <laughs> this feels absolutely great. I can't believe I'm touching the grass at Bush Stadium. How lucky am I? I love baseball and I love the original hometown I grew up in, St. Louis, Missouri. Really proud to be here today. Now I remember back in the day when I was working uh, with Roger on music videos for the scoreboard, during the rain delays, you know, there would be all this like music and um, there's actually like a, a format that you go through, right? During the game, whether you're going to call the game or not, like during a certain inning. How does that work? You mean the rain out situation? Yeah, like a rain out situation. What happens? Well, you know, the technology now is so good that you know when these storms are going to hit, you know how long they're going to be there, and you, you just work around it. Uh, I know one game this past season, uh, we knew a storm was about to hit right after the start of the game, so we delayed the start of the game, and it actually worked out to save it where the start, starting pitchers didn't get out, start throwing, and then have to take a two-hour break. So it is important, uh, but yeah, when, when you have a rain delay, you really want to watch the radar and make sure you're, you're informing the fans of what's going on. And there's fun things to do here at the park, too, like build your own Fredbird, right? So like during, I guess, a rain delay, you could like eat great food and... Right? Yeah, rain delays are uh, <laughs> very good for our concession business. <laughs> so have you made your own Fredbird? No, I have not. Okay, so this year, right? This will be the year. <laughs> Dan Farrell will be making a Fredbird. Um, so what else is going on at the ballpark this year? I, I noticed that there's some com construction going on. What are some changes happening during the off season? Yeah, we have, uh, one of our biggest projects is a, an area of the stadium called our Redbird Club. And that's a, a club area that is uh, behind a, a, a seating section. There's about 5,000 seats in that section. And we'll go up and we'll take a look at some of the changes that are going on there. But we're redoing the floor, redoing a lot of the, the wall graphics, we're putting in a lot of the new uh, televisions and creating a video uh, uh, wall and, and just really enhancing the entertainment in the area. Putting fans into the seating deck uh, uh, for those days when it's stifling uh, and uh, no air is moving around the ballpark. So as part of my behind the scenes tour, they brought me up to the broadcasting booth where I used to work on the scoreboard. Uh, and now this is Matt, and now he works on the scoreboard. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. So tell us a little bit about this uh, brain center that you have going on here. What's going on today? Well, really during, uh, during a day like today, we're just working on graphics, you know, kind of like this that are gonna be going up on the scoreboard uh, during the season. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's not too busy right now, but during the season, a lot of these stations get uh, used up for people that actually run the scoreboards and run the review boards and stuff like that during the season. So, so now this thing that you've invented, what is this? What program are you working on? Uh, this is After Effects. Okay. It's an Adobe program that uh, it's basically like I, I call it like moving Photoshop. If anybody knows what Photoshop is, it kind of creates a 3D look um, to everything and you use cameras and lights that uh, you know you just kind of move around stuff. So this is actually going to be our screensaver for this year. That'll stay looping throughout the uh, season whenever we don't have anything 
else up. On the scoreboard or on, on the, the website? Up on the scoreboard. Up on yeah. the scoreboard. Yeah. Okay, so as people are waiting and you know the next player's coming up or right. whatever, this will be playing. Right. Okay. Yep. Now, exactly. who picks out some of the music that you hear uh, throughout the game? We have morning? a uh, whole team of people. Uh, we have an audio guy that you know, kind of a kind of like a DJ up here that'll pick all the music that's going to be played out to the He's stadium. Actually, scratching. <laughs> no, no, he probably he doesn't do any of that. <laughs> but we got a whole big soundboard over there that he uses. Um, but basically, if we're if we're using any music for any videos or anything like that, it's just the editor gets to choose, you know, what music goes on what video. So. Are you excited to be working for the Cardinals? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I have. I've I've been here for one year and I've had a lot of fun. I'm really excited for this year. It's gonna be a great year. Great. Where did you do your training? How did you learn to use this equipment? I went to Southeast Missouri State. They have a really good video program. They have a. Uh, a uh, film program and a lot of uh, After Effects programs and stuff that, that I was in, involved in. So. And did you play ball as a kid? I played until my sophomore year of high school, um, but I've been a baseball fan all my life. So, I mean, I'll always be a fan. Favorite player, favorite Cardinal history moment? Ugh. Uh, my favorite Cardinal history moment was probably when Jim Emmons made that catch in the NLCS in 2004. Um, favorite player would probably be Holiday right now. So, all right, yeah. all right. So, and you're looking forward to this season, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. And I when's opening great. game? I know that you got this uh, calendar back here. March 31st. March 31st. Yeah. Okay, and who are they playing? Uh, I think uh, San Diego, I think. All right, we'll have to check the calendar to yeah, see. Or the definitely. schedule. Wait, now this is the official 2011 schedule, right? Yep. All right, so on March, let's take a peek. March, where's the home game? 31st. 31st. SD. All right, San Diego. Got it right. You win. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a pleasure to be here with hey, you, Matt. Thanks a lot. So, thanks. Continue to watch uh, Live It Up. I will. Uh, Bush Stadium all the way. So. Okay, so as part of my special behind the scenes day at the Cardinals, where did you bring me? Well, this is the television uh, broadcast booth. And who usually sits here? Rabowski and You're in Dan McLaughlin's chair. I am. And this is uh, Al Rabowski's chair. and. Uh, sometimes Rick Horton and Jay Randolph, and then when we have national television, it's uh, Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. You know, I'm feeling kind of the excitement and the magic. I want to be calling like the color play-by-play -play action over here. Um, so there's ice on the field today, but pretty soon there won't be. And uh, what what a view! I mean, it's I guess you know this is the place to sit right behind home plate in order to uh, you know say you know up next and all the cool things that are happening. It's great too to see the dugouts like from this perspective. You know, like uh, our team, their team kind of thing. So, home team. Um, so, how how are the uh, the uniforms this year? Do they get new uniforms every year, or do they, you know? We haven't changed the uniform look. We the Cardinals are one of the few teams that uh, really has kept the same uniform design, same logo for many many years. And uh, now I do think they make a new one each year, but okay. they, uh, they, they, they haven't clean, changed right? the design. So they're not so smelly, exactly. But they haven't changed the design. This is really very, very exciting. I mean, this is like a panoramic view, if you will, of everything that's like uh, St. Louis. Yeah, we're uh, when you you get your broadcasts are so important to you as a marketing and promotional tool that you want to make sure that the broadcasters have a, a great location to to uh, view the game from, call the game from, and. Uh, uh, we're fortunate. We have some great broadcasters, long, long history. Our radio guys between our two, uh, John Rooney and Mike Shannon on radio, they have over 60 years experience. And then McLaughlin and Raboski, Horton, uh, between the three of them, I, I, th I bet we probably 50, 60 years experience as well. So uh, amazing, we've right? got we've got some really, really veteran, really well-established broadcasters. And, and, you know, they have, uh, some of them have that cardinal firsthand knowledge, too, to be able to uh, talk about, you know, their days in the game and, and relate it to today's players. And I think that's always what's interesting, too, when you listen to uh, a broadcast, whether it's through the television or through the radio. Um, in fact, I, I know some people in New York would sometimes turn their car, you know, a radio antenna to pick up a cardinal game, you know, just to listen to the game. But I think it adds so much flavor and so much life. You know, between the fans, the announcers, the players, the vendors, you know, like popcorn, peanuts, Cracker Jacks, um, and the seventh inning stretch. I mean, it, uh, that's always one of my favorite parts of the game. You know, you get up, you stand, you shake it up a little bit. Um, so it's great. It's great to be here. And I know that before long, it's going to be filled with fans. How many people did you say can see here now? 
we can roughly forty five thousand is a sellout here okay. when we're when we're at capacity, and that includes about there's about forty three thousand seats and then two thousand standing room, uh, which they fill up those outfield areas and around the uh, concourses. How did you feel when they opened the doors uh, to the new stadium? What was that like for you? Yeah, that was a fun day. I still remember our, our first game. Uh, we actually had a, a minor league game as a as a warm up, but uh, the first opening day was a very special day. I remember it uh, like it was yesterday. And so the knot hole gang uh, continues, I guess, here today, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. We still have a knot hole ticket program uh, where uh, groups and and individuals uh, can can write in and, and uh, reserve uh, some blocks of tickets. Over the course of the season, we give out, give away uh, several hundred thousand tickets to various charities and groups. And uh, it's just been a long cardinal tradition that we've always wanted to uh, just make sure we had the broadest possible fan base. And the way you do that is you bring people into the park when they're young, you get them hooked on the game, they experience it, they may come in on a free ticket, they may come in on a steep discounted ticket, but once you, you can get them in the ballpark when they're young, uh, it takes, it, 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 the, the seed is planted and baseball so generational where, you know, grandpa took dad, yeah. dad took son, son will be soon taking his son and then he'll be the grandfather somewhere down it's the true. line. It's a family tradition. I was telling you as we were walking through that my mom used to, um, bring my Aunt Connie, they used to get on the bus and skip school just to come to Cardinal games sometimes. And when they got caught, uh, they got in big trouble. But, you know, my family, I even have the plates from like the different World Series. You know, I have so much Cardinal memorabilia at my house. It's like, it's just part of our decor. You know, it's like, uh, we all love the Cardinals. The season tickets, um, do people like get the same seats year after year? I mean, like they do with some ballparks or is it uh, just a free for all every year. You don't know where your season tickets might be. Oh no, we have uh, we have over twenty thousand season tickets, and I would say out of the best locations in the ballpark, the, the top ten or fifteen thousand locations, the majority of those season holders have probably been season ticket holders for twenty to thirty, forty years. Okay. Uh, and they know where their seats are. They know who's sitting near them, behind them, <laughs> next to them. They know the vendor. They know the usher. They are uh, very, uh, uh, it's it's like a neighborhood atmosphere in the season ticket locations. Yeah, I can I can see that. I, I remember what that's like. It's, it's pretty exciting. But there's no, what's so nice about it is even with the old stadium and the new stadium, there's no bad seat in the house. I mean, every seat has an opportunity to see a great game. So that's it's exciting. Right. And sometimes I remember when Andrew, uh, who's now 20, I remember bringing him to the ball game once and we sat so close that game. You could see the stitching, you know, on the players, you know, names or whatever. And Andrew looked up to me and he goes, he goes, mommy, he goes, can we sit at the very top? And sure enough, we had to get in the elevator. I had to bring him all the way to the very top row so that he could see the game from there. So, you know, there's really no bad seat in the house. So, uh, Andrew, that's for you, my home run family kid. Uh, so, yeah, it's great. Great to be here again. You know, great to be here. Well, live it up, St. Louis, from the broadcast booth. Woo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, St. Louis's own Donna Drake from Live It Up! Woo! Okay, this one can do it. <clears throat> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light Okay, so stay tuned because in 2012, I'm actually going to sing the whole song in front of an entire stadium on Cardinal territory. So be there, buy your ticket now if you want to see me sing the real national anthem in 2012. Thanks for watching the show, and we would love to hear from you. You can reach us at liveitup.tv, and on there, you could actually join a Facebook page and even a Fans of St. Louis page. So thanks for watching.